Hello and welcome everybody back to E4. Today we're going to be revitalizing the first ever empire of China and that is the Qin Dynasty. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to kind of create a warring states period in China today. You know, I could do, do this by just simply releasing out Qin, which is the very first dynasty of China. Well, they unified all of China and we're going to get Xi'an as our capital here, but the easiest way for us to do this, because nobody would really support our independence in order to do such a thing, is actually going to release out a few different nations. And here we go, we're going to play as Chen after creating a giant vassal swarm out of China. Ah, here we go, nice, nice blue color here. The very first government reform we're going to choose, and this is very important, we're going to choose the Chinese Kingdom government. This gives us a fixed dynasty. We are guaranteed a kingdom rank, and we get access to Unified China CB, along with a t with 50% liberty desire in our country, and governing capacity plus 500, and manpower recovery speed. We also got 100% crown lunge just by releasing ourselves out. So of course we're going to give ourselves all three mana privileges, though not the cheap advisors, as that's going to be a little bit much on our stability. As part of the domination update, we actually get a new mission tree specific for Chinese warlords. Uh, basically gearing us towards conquering all of China and once we actually conquer all of China we still get some of these missions but we also go down a path of uh, pretty much getting a lot of Ming's missions as well too. Pretty much built up to my four summon I can only have about 7k troops I have six and once I insult Ming complete this mission which gives us 10,000 manpower along with 75 army tradition however if we do this while winning our independence war with at least 25% we get military tech by one so I'm going to hold off on this otherwise I could take this and we could probably get mil tech four in the next couple of years which I mean also that's great I get a ton of manpower uh ah, screw it we'll just take it <laughs> we got a really good general he's a 5431 oh we got a really good error 534 and our truce with Ming is over and guess what I'm gonna ally at least one guy that's gonna be Wu here and we're gonna just gonna go ahead and immediately attack uh Ming actually hold on also ally Yue and now I'm gonna go ahead and attack Ming. So far this war is not going too bad I mean you know they only have 12k troops no manpower and the Yan also declared independence from Ming. All right tier 3 government reform time we're gonna go with strength and noble privileges I need the manpower especially if we're gonna be trying to attempt to unify all of China and ruler died at the age of like 25. Thanks game. Goodness this is war all across China right now. The Xi are trying to break free, the Jin are trying to break free, and of course I'm trying to break free. This is what China's war map mode looks like. Not too bad. And it looks like, yeah, Yan is now free. And our truce with them is actually up. I mean, I could actually potentially ally these guys. We could also form a coalition against them. We won our independence war. We're going to take something like this along with almost 300 ducats. Ooh, and she actually got Miltech 5 already. Almost there myself. However, I will be attacking these guys with the Unified China CB. Hopefully we can kind of get an early jump on them. Maybe we'll hire the free company also to give us a bit of a bolster in our troops. Okay, and in this war with Xi, I'm going to take about this much land and uh, about 200 ducats. We can finally take this, which gives us core creation costs and monthly war exhaustion for 23 years, or 25 years. All right, truce with both Liang and Qi is over. I'm going to immediately attack Qi, which is going to be our favorite CB, is the Unify China one. Go ahead, do this, Unify China. Full annexation of Liang time. And right now, we're looking to be like the biggest guy in all of China. So far, so good. And we will be attacking Qi next. Uh, be specifically because she would not join. She is in bankruptcy, so uh, got to take advantage of that right now. Awesome. We finally got our 534, who's also a scholar. This is great. We got some good army tradition going on, and so our ruler's a good general. And as for Chi, almost pretty much full annex these guys. I don't know if I want to though. Uh, oh well, we <laughs> they have this stuff, so we won't be able to full annex them. Take this, and we are a great power that was super fast. Or number six actually all right let's look at ming's diplo map mode so uh they're warning she and yan here and uh pretty much all these southern guys are trying to break free now to deal with these rebels we're gonna go ahead and attack yan which only Caradel would join which is these guys right here so yeah we'll just go ahead and attack them all right our truce with ming and literally everybody else is over meaning i could attack everybody 
but I'm not going to just yet. Also, if you're wondering about our ideas, we get generic Chinese ideas, which are actually really good ideas, by the way. Uh, we get manpower recovery speed plus 10%. Admin tech cost minus five, and then once we finish our ideas, we get 25% national manpower, uh, more advisors, stab cost, production efficiency, prestige, infantry combat ability, yearly legitimacy, and mandate growth, along with diplo rep. This world with Yan, we're just going to take all their Chinese stuff. This, their most northern provinces in Manchuria, I don't need that right now. We're all this up. I believe our truce with Jin is over. I'm going to do a quick little pit stop here. We can also complete this mission where we own 25 provinces in north china region uh and own beijing so now we actually get stability and a permanent claim on all of manchuria and the forbidden city it gets the forbidden city gets upgraded to at least a tier one uh great project which is great all right i'm gonna disband this grand company they're way too expensive right now and we're gonna have to state all this stuff up may or may not be a problem we'll see but at least we're concentrating all that debt back into xi'an the traditional capital of china so i have way too many freaking forts might also be a good idea idea for me to get some allies so we're gonna ally com at least for now and we will also ally uh tongning uh, down here, which is basically Taiwan, because I concentrated all that development back into our capital. Our capital is now size 45. Also lowering autonomy in all these provinces, which means we're probably going to get rebel bomb, but uh, kind of need the extra money and manpower. We're going to have about 41,000 troops, which is really, really nice. And we were only able to start with like 7k guys. Tier 3 government reform. We're going to go with the examination system. This one's a really nice one for China. Gives us more advisors and makes our nobility a little bit less influential. And we're going to launch our next war, this time against Miao, who seems to be like the second largest guy over here. And they only have 10k troops, so let's do this. Alright, we can full annex Miao. And this is only going to cost us 190 admin. That's so cheap. Next, we're going to go ahead and attack Ning, who has no allies whatsoever. I'm going to full annex Ning. No admin whatsoever to annex those guys. All right, first idea group time. We're going to choose a military one. Considering we're doing really good in terms of manpower and just arm, army size, we don't have to take we don't have to take quantity ideas. Instead, I think I might take in, uh, quality ideas, uh, so we can stack the infantry combat later on, get some additional discipline, and just make our army better overall. Ally in Taiwan to break their alliance with Wu. You know what time that is. All right next, these guys zero admin to spend. Wonderful. You may notice I'm keeping Ming around. And that's for a very very specific reason. If I take their mandate now, I'm probably gonna end up being destroyed by the Oirat, who's well, I can guarantee he's well over 300 dev. So we're going to break apart the way right at some point, especially because I need provinces from them for the North China area, or, well, region. Uh, and plus, we'll release out a few nations out of them. Ooh, I can actually replace my heir. Ah, with a 561. Yeah, let, that sounds fantastic. Let's do it. All right, time to take out the men. I could actually call on my friend in, uh, in Taiwan here. I'm not going to do that gonna call on Yue who is allied to both Korea men and my ally here but uh mainly looking to break that alliance between them and Korea all right with Yue I'm just gonna make them break their alliances it's gonna be a super short truce and as for men of course we're gonna full annex them and our ruler just died uh what timing so I got a 561 and we got a 443 air pretty decent take it and we're gonna chill on wars until 1500 this way we can immediately attack ua and allows our country to just chill truce with ua is over and uh immediately unify china time to do a stack wipe yep there it goes their entire army we could actually full annex these guys however i'm gonna also make them uh turn some course to dive yet here that's gonna help out my tributary state over here I know you always just gone. All right, uh, tier four gun reform. We're gonna go with strength and confusion bureaucracy. This allows us to harmonize with religions a lot faster. We also get more governing capacity, and uh, we also get admin, and it improves our clergy loyalty by a hundred percent every time we harmonize with religion. I'm also gonna vassalize my ally here in Taiwan. No bloodshed needed there. Also, finally, the Renaissance is starting to spread throughout my country. I was kind of concerned because, to be honest, I've been paying the tech penalties this entire time but that's because korea's been ahead in technology and because of that i've been getting discounts on everything 
I'm very happy that's actually spreading in my country right now. And of course, colonialism is also spreading to Korea. All right, let's fight Ayutthaya. We're going to take Dali over this time. Uh, we're going to be fighting Ayutthaya, Pegu, Hisenwi, and Mong Kong. So it's kind of a big war just because of Ayutthaya, but um, we can have 100,000 troops. I don't think this should be a problem. All right, we can finally get Ayutthaya out of this war. One last guy. I think it's pretty much going to wrap up this war. All right, let's finally full annex Dali. And it pretty much just leaves us with like Ming and the Oirat, of course. But uh, I'm thinking we're gonna leap on an Oirat next. We are gonna complete this mission on Kershina, which improves the monument in Chengdu, which is actually a really, really good, great project. Uh, gives you province governing costs, local development, and global monthly devastation, which is fantastic when you actually fully upgrade this. Plus, it's a silk province and a farmlands province. By completing that mission, we actually got permanent claims on the Tibet and Burma regions, and now we also have permanent claims on Manchuria. And right, once they get a little bit more manpower, we will go to war with Oirat. All right, let's begin our war against Divi or not Divi. Let's begin our war against uh, the Oirat. We're gonna try and break these guys apart as much as possible. I want to become the Emperor of China and mess around with a new Empire of China missions and mechanics. So let's do it. Second idea, group time. I'm thinking we're going to end up taking innovative ideas. It's going to pair nicely with quality ideas, giving us more infantry combat ability. And it'll help us stay, you know, ahead in technology. And sure enough, yep, Oira has 406 dev. Ooh, we got a new era, 543, nice. Finally, we can take these provinces that we want, and we're going to make Oira return a bunch of land to both the uh, Yarkin and Jakatai. Finally, we have the Renaissance. Now we have to get colonialism, which, I mean, Korea should be spreading it to us very soon. We're going to go ahead and attack Karadel, as they have one province that I need in North China. And uh, that puts us at war with the Oira again, which is not a bad thing. Oira is currently at 318 dev, so we could probably knock them down again. And I think that should put Oira below 300 dev, just barely th under 300 dev. And we're going to make Tibet into a tributary state, and uh, we can get anybody else. That'd be great. All right, we are going to make a pit stop in Ming super fast. And we're going to just go ahead and take the Mandate of Heaven from these guys. No need to keep them around much longer. Claim the Mandate. And full annexation. Boom. We're now the Emperor of China. Which means now we get access to all the Chinese missions. Which is actually pretty cool. So that's where we're going to call it for today. We are the number four great power. At almost a thousand development. Commonwealth is number one. We've pretty much con we've conquered all of China at this point. And uh, we are now the Emperor and we have a couple tributaries and stuff and if you guys would like to see me continue this campaign as the Qin Dynasty then uh, and also complete most of these missions or if not all these missions go ahead drop a like on this video I'm thinking if we get something like 300 likes I think uh, we will continue this campaign as the Qin and assert Chinese dominance over the rest of the world also if you really enjoy this video I do want to encourage you guys to go ahead hit that subscribe button as it really helps out a lot I'm trying to get 5,000 subscribers before i do a true air of timmer achievement run so make sure you guys stick around for that and i will see you guys in the next one chairman out